Sai, um, I think we can go live. Clive, sir. Sai, um, I think we can move. Yeah, we are live. All right. So, uh, hello everyone and good evening. So, uh, this is a session by the team of um, the SS Medical Group faculties of Doc Tutorials. And uh, so, I have with me a uh, lot of our dear faculties the pillars of our team. So coming forward uh, to help our dear candidates preparing for the upcoming NEETSS exam, which is hardly 20 days uh, away. So this is just a last minute tip set for the exam. So um, at the outset, um, I welcome all dear faculties to this meeting. And uh, I'll just say some introductory points to uh, all the students listening, and then I'll go to the respective faculties. So first of all, 20 days remaining for the exam. And uh, as we all know, our subject of general medicine is very vast. You, me, none of the faculty sitting here will be able to master A to Z of the subject, which is understood. So let's be humble to that big subject of general medicine. So I'm sure that uh, everyone will, will be having uh, anxious thoughts. Uh, will I be able to perform? How will I complete the syllabus? I've forgotten most of what I learned. That will be there naturally. Okay. Now, uh, leading to the exam, one point I want to tell you is, see, neat SS exam pattern, uh, there is always an element of unpredictability. So when you go to the exam hall, uh, just be prepared for all sort of questions mentally. Because if you compare the last two-year NEET SS papers, you will see that the previous one had a mixed bag of questions with uh, factual questions as well as clinical scenarios. But the exam before that was very much inclined towards clin clinical scenarios. So sometimes what can happen is that if you go with the mindset, okay, this paper will be full of clinical scenarios and suddenly you see some factuals, you might be anxious. And what can happen is even for simple questions, you may get some errors. So I want you all to be relaxed. Just go to the exam hall expecting that, well, this paper can either be very factual, very clinical or a mix of it. Be prepared for whatever that comes your way. And the same is for everyone. So be relaxed on that. So the second point I want to tell you is what to do and what not to do leading to the exam in the remaining 20 days. So this is my suggestion. My suggestion is uh, in the remaining 20 days, focus on uh, areas that you tend to forget more. Okay, Like for example, uh, certain factuals, factuals related to the respective subjects, gene mutations, because you're likely to forget. There is no point going behind too many clinical scenarios now because I'm sure that it comes naturally to you. When you see the question, you see the scenario, you will remember it. So in the last 20 days, please go behind points that you have already learned, but you have forgotten. Don't go behind too many factuals that you have not learned. So just go behind whatever you have learned and you want to remember it once again. Like there are some points in endocrinology, certain genes, Karthik subject is full of genes. Okay. So uh, you have to go through it again. So, and also talking about genes, last exam also had good number of questions from uh, genetics. So uh, endocrinological conditions, uh, neurological conditions, when you read Cadacil, and now you're a bit confused. Is it notch three gene mutation, notch one? So those points, please go through. That is the second suggestion I have. So that, you know, you become confident. Third suggestion is, uh, again, coming to the same genetics. So last knee test is a surprise that actually came for many candidates were questions from genetics. 
So I request all of you to go through the genetics part, just quickly brush it. You may get some questions there. Uh, number four, uh, biostatistics. Well, sometimes you may get two or three questions from biostatistics. Already in the doc tutorials app, there is a video that is uh, uploaded, a concise video by Dr. Dajasi Ma'am, uh, our PSM faculty on biostatistics. And I highly recommend you to go through that because those are rank deciding questions. Because if the question suddenly pops in the paper and then you know you do not know it, then you know you are at an disadvantage. So please go through the biostatistics part as well. Then uh, kind finally coming to whatever you have learned from doc tutorials or whichever app you are following. So let me talk about doc tutorials. What I would suggest is you can just go through your notes, try to you know at least try to pretend confident. Okay, everyone will be anxious, but be confident and uh, just go through the notes. And then um, I think uh, something that you should not miss, I've told every candidate, please go through the Harrison's tables and flowcharts because all of us, you know, they, we have prepared some very useful content, especially the Harrison's tables and flowcharts, then the quick revision videos. I think if you ask me, sir, I have got very less time left. What video should I watch? I will say the quick revision videos and the Harrison's tables and flowcharts videos because many questions can directly and indirectly come from the Harrison's tables and flowcharts. And all of us have discussed in the doc tutorials app, and I request you to go through that. So, this is these are the general points I want to tell you. So, from now on, we'll be discussing some high yield topics with respect to our individual subjects. So I'll talk about neurology a while later. First of all, you know, I'll have uh, Dr. Karthik. Dr. Karthik, uh, good evening. Dr. Karthik, you are muted. You are muted. Good evening, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. So, yeah. Dr. Karthik, uh, 20 days remaining. Endocrinology was subject. Now, what if you have, we have got a candidate asking us, uh, I've got to cover at least some very important topics from endocrinology. What will be your advice to them? Yeah, then, uh, a medicine student who has completed his residency and is now going to attend the entrance, the areas which he would be more versed would be the thyroid, the adrenal, and the diabetes, and sometimes the pituitary also. And many a time, the people or the students equate the whole endocrinology to these areas. I'm not saying these are not important and many times so many questions will come from these areas also. But the questions from these areas are more likely to be answered by everyone. They tend to be simpler compared to the questions from other areas. So in the remaining 20 days, I would want to give an advice that you should focus on the other areas which have lesser number of pages represented, represented in Harrison but has got the equal number of questions for sometimes more as evidenced in NEET SS 2022. I would like to name a few areas like that. One very important is posterior pituitary. You would learn about all the anterior pituitary hormones, but last time three questions were there from diabetes insipidus and posterior pituitary disorders, as well as disorders of sodium balance. That is one. Second, very important, reproductive endocrinology. The PCOS, the menopausal hormone therapy, contraceptive measures. These are very, very important points from reproductive endocrinology. And you should not go to the exam without reading these areas because this menopausal hormone therapy, hardly two or three pages is given in Harrison, but they are started with so many points. So please, please make sure that you are reading and revising these areas as well. Then the third area would be bone and mineral metabolism. At not the entire part, you should read the hypocalcemia, read about hypercalcemia, osteoporosis, and very, very importantly, the miscellaneous bone disorders. There are certain miscellaneous bone disorders discussed at the end of the chapter. For example, hepatitis C associated osteosclerosis, pycno dysostosis, certain named bone conditions and syndromes. Those are very, very high yield areas. And last but not the least, the MEN1 and APS. Is, is as important as any other topic, be it adrenal, pituitary, this MEN1 and APS contains less number of pages in Harrison, 
but you can guess two or even three questions from the overall endocrine paper. So these are the areas where I would want you to focus in the last 20 days. And of course, I am pretty sure that you would be able to answer all the questions com coming from the thyroid, adrenal, and you will be focusing <clears throat> the remaining 20 days to have discussions from these areas on the group itself. And regarding which material to use uh, for revision, of course, Rahul sir has mentioned the uh, importance in revising the QRP as well as uh, the uh, Harrison table video. I would also advise you if you had gone through the Elite test videos of the last year as well as this year, because endocrinology, you have 200 questions discussed, and I've made sure that there is equal representation from all these areas and some points which are not mentioned in Harrison. Uh, and which could likely be asked in the question. We had certain questions last year also, which were not there in Harrison, but have come directly from the Elite system. So if you had previously watched that video, you can probably revise it by in 2x or 3x speed so that you are not missing out on any point. So this is all what I have to summarize with regards to endocrinology. Any questions are welcome in the chat box. Yeah, Karthik sir, there is a question, especially to you from Dr. Harshit Gupta. What about metabolism of purine, pyrimidine, and collagen synthesis? Okay. So, the purine and pyrimidine, they are usually not asked as it. Sometimes the, uh, the Lesh Nyhan, the Kelly Seek Miller, the name syndromes are asked because all they can, the, uh, the, the disorders of intermediary metabolism, they itself constitute around 50 or 70 pages in Harrison with so many name conditions, mutations that are hardly asked. So in the remaining 10 days, I would be posting important MCQs from the hand-picked metabolic disorders like the porphyria, the, uh, the collagen disorder metabolism, then uh, the mucopolysaccharidosis and the important disorders of amino acid metabolism. I would be discussing and uh, uh, the important previously asked questions from the knee tests as well as the INI. So don't, no need to worry on that respect you would be getting all the questions, important questions, because doing a video on those areas would be too exhaustive because that would be started with too many points. And so I would be focusing just on the important areas. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Karthik. So uh, coming to the uh, uh, nephrology part. So Dr. Vivek, uh, good evening. Uh, good evening, sir. Yeah. So Dr. Vivek, again, for nephrology, the same question to Dr. Karthik. Um, what is your suggestion? How should I be going with uh, the remaining 20 days for nephrology? Yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, Dr. Rahul Rajiv has already summed up the entire, th uh, the main highlighting points that is the definitely the tables from Harrison, the flowchart from Harrison, which we already have recorded, the quick revision programs and the elite test series. Apart from that, you know, I, I, I saw the pattern of the questions of, uh, from nephrology in the NEAT SS, in the INISS, especially in the NEAT SS. And I have written down a few important topics and subtopics in some areas, which are very, very high yielding. So, you know, if you could just jot it down, that would be very convenient. Uh, coming to uh, acute kidney injury, uh, biomarkers in AKI is very high yielding. Acute interstitial nephritis is very high yielding. Coming to chronic kidney disease, your CKD mineral bone disorder is very high yielding, especially the osteitis fibrosa cystica part. Then you also, uh, the calcific uremic arteriolopathy or the calciphylaxis, that's a very high yielding zone from a lot many MCQs are asked. Now, jumping straight to the, the, the lesser important, considered to be the less important chapters, which are the cystic diseases and nephrolithiasis and stone disorders. Now, these two chapters, as Dr. Karthi was also mentioning, they represent very less pages in Harrison, but trust me, each year, at least two to three questions are being asked from these. Now, from the cystic disorders, of course, the ADPKD, the autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease. And there is a table which, which is a comparative study of the different cystic diseases of the kidney. That table itself is very important. Now, coming to glomerular disorders, in the, in the entire chapter is important. But the post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, C3 glomerulopathy, IgA nephropathy, and the frequently relapsing and infrequently relapsing nephrotic syndrome and the steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome, the SRNS. These are very, very high yielding for the NEAT SS. Now, uh, to other genetic disorders, of course, the Alpoch syndrome and the thin basement membrane disease, 
as to what is the EM finding in each and what is the GBM thickening. Uh, coming to, you know, jumping again to CKD, one more portion that I missed earlier, that is anemia in CKD, especially the HIF PHIs which are the current burning issues, the, the, the newer drugs that have, you know, the Desirustat, the Roxadustat, which have revolutionized the treatment of anemia and CKD. So those are very, very, you know, it is very impending that they will be coming in your exam. And of course, your renal tubular acidosis, your electrolyte disorders, as already mentioned, sodium and calcium are always the most high yielding. Dr. Karthik also mentioned about them. And last of all, your alternate pathway the defect of alternate pathway and your atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome or the thrombotic microangiopathy in totality is very, very high yielding. And, uh, you know, also I missed the urine examination. You know, it is the most basic thing, the approach to proteinuria, the approach to hematuria. I have discussed it time and again, but urine examination and the crystals are very, very important. And of course, in my WhatsApp group also, I have stepped up the academic discussion and the next 15 to 20 days, we shall pick up each topic at a time and I shall be discussing very high yielding points there. So please be active on the WhatsApp group as well. Thank you. That's it from my side. Yeah. So I think um, just for all the students, uh, I know that many of you are already in the WhatsApp groups, but uh, for those who are not there in the WhatsApp group, what I'll do is uh, in the comment section of this video, I leave uh, you know our contact numbers as well, so that you know you can WhatsApp us personally. So I just uh, send in the comment section of this video. So if you're watching this video later as well, you can just uh, go through it. Okay. So uh, I think you know Dr. Vivek and Dr. Karthik, they have given us a, a comprehensive list of uh, important topics, and I want everyone to please go through these topics. Now this is based on our experience of uh, the previous exam questions uh, that we are actually coming to uh, certain conclusions that, okay, these topics are the most important ones. Now, uh, moving to uh, Vijay, sir. Uh, Vijay, sir, uh, good evening. So, uh, uh, medical oncology is one topic where uh, sometimes students can have uh, doubts, you know, which areas to focus uh, because it's relatively untouched, uh, uh, I should say. So, sir, what do you think? Uh, which areas uh, should be more focused? Uh Having said this, this is very true. Medical oncology includes both mat and solids. So this might be a, a rank deciding area also because this is usually not touched in your uh, UG days. You tend to uh, not much involved into medical oncology in your MD time also. So getting to know only the basic stuff and the high yielding stuff might be useful in attending any of your NEET or INASS exams. So during the last NEET assess, what we saw was most of the questions were from the hematology part than from the solids part. And the hematology part was more from the hemato-oncology part than from the benign hematology part. So hemato-oncology, which includes acute myeloid leukemia, the chronic myeloid leukemia, the chronic lymphocytic, and very rarely from acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So acute myeloid and chronic myeloid leukemias were the most touched areas during the last NEET assess. And that is the important high yielding topic from oncology side also, because there are genetic parts involved in AML, the treatment and the genetics of CML, and very rarely few points to know about CLL is the treatment and the classification part of that. Most of the times you get very rare questions from ALL. When it comes to solid tumors, most common tumors are usually supposed to be asked, but last time we had a caveat of questions from transplant of uh, hepatocellular carcinoma criteria and few questions from hepatocellular carcinoma. That might not be uh, like you uh, end up having a question from there always. So tend to concentrate if possible on important solid tumor parts like your lung, breast cancer. These two are the most important areas. And if possible, these areas are I mean, pertaining to these areas, the Harrison tables have been covered and the QRP sessions have also focused on whatever is needed from all these uh, rare scenarios, which can actually help you in knowing the most important stuff of all these topics. Apart from this, very rarely you can have questions from renal cell carcinoma and sometimes from hepatocellular carcinoma. 
So this much will be required to for, for you to be remembered from the oncology point of view to click those few questions which might actually be a game changer because most of the times these are the untouched areas and people who actually tend to answer rightly by knowing the stuff might actually edge over the others. Thank you, sir. Absolutely, sir. I think um, uh, oncology, I think, is going to be ranked deciding because uh, it's relatively untouched. So you can actually score over others if you can get these questions right. So thank you so much, uh, Vijay, sir. Moving on to uh, Nia, sir. So Nia, sir, uh, coming to infectious diseases, so what to cover in the remaining few weeks? Yeah, so infectious diseases, as you all know, is vast. So we have both the clinical symptoms and infectious diseases as well as the individual organisms. So it would be better that uh, most of the questions, if you look at the pattern of the previous years, they more focus on the clinical syndromes rather than the individual organisms. So the clinical syndrome, be it pneumonia, UTI, infective endocarditis, the CNS infections, that is meningitis and encephalitis, intra-abdominal infections. Uh, that include especially the bacterial food poisoning part. So these are topics from which uh, the questions had come much uh, in the last few exams. Uh, coming to the organisms per se, uh, the important topics uh, are the tropical infections. So many questions have come from that. Malaria is very important. One of the image based questions usually comes from malaria. So malaria, uh, the diagnosis is important both the smears as well as the rapid diagnostic test for malaria is important, as well as the treatment, as well as the prophylaxis for malaria are a very favorite uh, topics for the examiners. Leptospirosis, endric fever, as well as dengue fever, also you should be thorough with. Apart from that, the individual organisms, HIV, HIV is quite vast. It is difficult to learn the entire Harrison and the initial pathogenesis, and it's unlikely that those things will come from that. But to focus on, uh, I would say to focus on the opportunistic infections, that is very important, and the antiretroviral therapy. And you should be also knowing the NACO guidelines, which we had discussed in the quick provision programs. Tuberculosis, again, was from the clinical uh, scenarios, the extrapulmonary tuberculosis part is very important. Also, uh, important is the treatment, especially some. Uh, about the drug resistant tuberculosis and the new drugs you should be focusing. And latent tuberculosis is something that you can expect the question from, especially the diagnosis of latent tuberculosis. Syphilis is another important organism. Again, there are multiple MCQs that can come from syphilis as well. Apart from that, among the bacteria, I think Staphylococcus aureus always asked and treatment part is very important. Brucella is another organism which uh, you should again focus on. So altogether, these are the organisms. Now, one topic that we always neglect, but which is coming up uh, as a very important topic is the antimicrobial resistance. It's a hot topic today. And if an ID person is putting questions, definitely you can expect, though it had not come in the previous exams, I believe that AMR, you should have some part of the topic. And chapter number 144 and 145 of Harrison, uh, a topic uh, or the chapters that you usually don't read. But at least the tables in that particular chapters, 144 and 145, will give you enough data regarding the antimicrobial resistance. Nothing more than that will be asked. Now, as already told, most of the ID questions last year came from the tables in Harrison. We focus on that and do watch the Harrison table discussion that we had conducted. So that's from the infectious disease. Okay, uh, thanks a lot, sir. Uh, so now we'll go to Kamal, sir. Kamal, sir, cardiology. So. Uh, you know, very vast. Okay. But I think last time also we had good number of questions. So, sir, uh, how to go about cardiology? Yeah. So, it's important as uh, was being mentioned by my by preceders uh, and you yourself mentioned very important to revise important topics. So, I categorize topics in two categories. One is Topics which are important, you get substantial number of questions, but number of pages and chapters and number of questions to solve are proportionately much higher. Those important topics are clinical examination, uh, heart failure, and ischemic heart disease. But compared to these, there are chapters which have very few pages, very few questions, but you will surely get some questions. So these are cardiac tumors, 
cardiac anesthesia and assessment in ischemic heart disease assessment of jvp that's it's a short short topic you're going to get two or three questions on jvp same way one question on cardiac tumor you will have pre operative assessment and remember there are some new chapters added in brunwald and harrison in cardiology which again as a paper setter you are more tempted by by uh, uh, from his point of view to ask a few questions from them that is cardiac amyloidosis cardiac sarcoidosis uh, wearable technology and genetic assessment of cardiovascular disorder hocm constriction restriction are always high yield topics you read they will surely have couple of questions coming from them so these are the important topics and as was mentioned by my colleagues our active whatsapp group i'm going to start uh, in the remaining days uh, sub topic wise per day posting questions so i will be trying to come up with a a uh, timetable for the group and where i will mention like this next day i'm going to ask you on ischemic heart disease you can prepare on that and of course we have a very quick revision uh, from harrison based diagram table flow charts videos for each of us faculties which i think are very handy very useful and can be done very quickly so those are my tips of course you must be keeping time in mind because one question in one minute that's how the strategy has to be don't try to over analyze the question don't try to overdo it don't think that you will be able to come back to the uh, previous question that you have left blank that usually doesn't happen we have taken that feedback in our previous uh, successful candidate strategy as well you need to be doing your first attempt as the best attempt uh, that's the take home message that i want to give all right thanks a lot uh, and um, uh, the students you know i just want to tell you one more thing that uh, uh, when you look at the neat ss paper please also expect some questions at the neat pg level as well because last time you had even questions from heart sounds okay second heart sound question was asked yeah clinical exam yep yeah. so just like as i said along with going through these topics don't neglect the simple basic topics that are short short like sir said jvp there has to be a question there will be a question based on either jvp heart sounds or murmurs so which are systolic murmurs diastolic murmurs so please just brush through it so prashant sir uh, good evening welcome and uh, sir uh, what about uh, gastro and hepato Uh, thank you sir uh, hi everyone uh, from uh, gastroenterology and hepatology perspective <laughs> guys uh, there are a lot of uh, new things coming up but then the basics are basics you are going to get some questions definitely in few topics and some are vague so the high yield topics from gastro luminal perspective are uh, disorders of in esophagus you would have like eosinophilic esophagitis corrosive uh, uh, management after a corrosive injury then when it comes to stomach you would be getting questions on helicobacter pylori and uh, peptic ulcer disease or upper gi bleed and when it uh, comes to pancreas management of acute pancreatitis becomes important when it when you go towards the gallbladder side and cholecholelithiasis management in the form of cholangitis management uh, and the decision about when to do ercp when to do ptbd these decision making questions are sometimes asked when it comes to liver the hbv management hcv management are questions which they concentrate on and very important from tumor perspective is hepatocellular carcinoma the recent bclc classification there is a change in the management of first line medication with respect to immunotherapy which has come into being so these are things which have been discussed in qrp also and these are also changed in the recent harrison so these are the high yield topics from uh, perspective of uh, uh, liver and when it comes to liver the decompensation of cirrhosis and management in the form of indications contraindications for few procedures especially liver transplant are some of the topics which you guys will be uh, tested upon and some topics it will be a vast but reading some section of that particular topics are important like the entire nutrition it looks like it's too vast but the questions on parenteral nutrition and then total parenteral nutrition and some in a management of uh, sepsis from lines and these are few things where they might test your uh, knowledge 
uh, when it comes to inflammatory bowel disease again there are some set of questions like with respect to uh, biologicals which can be asked there are not much trials in uh, gastroenterology and hepatology but like nafld and the recent new drugs uh, they can try asking questions in these uh, topics clostridium difficile uh, infection again uh, where there's a flow chart of management and the new indications of fecal microbiota transplantation or what you recently call as imt are really high yield topics okay so uh, celiac disease again few questions with respect to the antibody management how do you do it what's the treatment can be uh, touched upon so from gastro and hepato perspective the most important topics i have just told like hcc at least two to three questions in different format the imaging the ct maybe mri or close differential like hepatic adenoma or something else being added to that have been tested regularly so i would say that these are the high yield topics from my branch of course like my colleagues have already elucidated please go through the quick revision program where many questions get covered quickly and the harrison tables from all of us and biostatistics really important part thank you these are the high yield from gastro and hepat yeah yeah thank you so much sir again uh, i just want to tell about the biostatistics part as well you know prashant sir if you remember last time uh, you know for the ini uh, i had uh, dr pranjal singh you know telling me that biostatistic questions were rank deciding because there were many simple question you remember he told us that uh, yes, yes, yes. Some, th there were many questions asked in the uh, ini part of yes so yes, sir, i want yes. everyone to please go through that biostatistics video by rajasi ma'am wonderful size crisp video now coming to neurology so i just want to tell you that see as far as neurology is concerned um, i am not going to tell you to go through the scenario presentations of uh, parkinson's disease or a typical parkinsonism or a clinical presentation of an mnd uh, ms you will answer all of them i'm sure that when it, when you see the question you will be able to answer but uh, i am more bothered about uh, certain points that you are likely to forget so uh, coming to those points so first of all i want everyone to go through the treatment aspects of certain diseases where you might be asked in the form of a scenario what is the next drug to be given or they can ask you a question based on the mechanism of action of certain drugs number one do not forget to learn about anti epileptics lot of anti epileptics and uh, especially the newer ones you may be asked regarding the uses or related to the mechanism of action even the conventional anti epileptics like phenytoin you might get a question on the therapeutic plasma level so do not forget to go through the anti epileptics there is a table in harrison also on anti epileptics number one treatment for parkinson's disease so the various drugs available and say you might be given specific questions for levodopa dyskinesia what will you give for severe of episode what will you give and newer drugs like estradiolin please go through next multiple sclerosis if you look uh, throughout harrison any system you take uh, about the drugs in detail maximum is for multiple sclerosis you see that all the drugs with detailed mechanism of action is given in harrison so please go through the drugs in multiple sclerosis and their mechanism of action very very important and i think you know definitely you will get questions from that may be related to side effects also you may get questions migraine drugs important especially the cgrp monoclonal antibodies you can expect questions or even from the gipans then you may get questions from uh, monoclonal antibodies like uh, aducanumab alzheimer's disease expected and also um, you know question of on new sinersen uh, that has been asked previously as well and also the newer drugs uh, for various element disorders also can be asked and uh, uh, i think you know in sma drugs also uh, the mechanism is also important so this these are the important drugs uh, you should know and not to forget about anti platelets and anti coagulants any cardiologist any neurologist it is their favorite area there has to be a question from that then uh, coming to the uh, tables i will tell you there are points hidden in the table even last time i stressed it during the qrp session also about glut 1 actually it is from harrison itself after the exam many people thought it's a new question no about glut 1 causing a refractory epilepsy is given in harrison so please go through the harrison tables and also well as the qrp discussion videos then uh, coming to the genetic ataxias do not forget uh, you know the spinocerebellar ataxias they might ask you which 
uh, ska is associated with untranslated repeat which is associated with a benign course so all those questions are expected and also coming to the genetics part of neurology last time they asked about the uh, which of the following neurological disorders is not a trinucleotide repeat expansion disorder so there is a table in which they have given the various trinucleotide repeat expansion disorders please go through it stroke syndromes important just brush through the stroke syndromes especially you know even don't get lateral medullary syndrome wrong okay if you get a question like lateral medullary syndrome wrong i am going to hit you hard no doubt about it because you have been learning it from mbbs days so it's very very important such uh, stroke syndromes if you get a rare syndrome wrong that's fine no problem i'll forgive but not for lateral medullary syndrome and uh, simpler questions then uh, very important often neglected you know the element disorders part so the element disorders uh, you know you've got uh, uh, in the harrison part there are some tables in which lot of questions are hidden you may get questions from the genetics of hsp genetics of als the various myopathies lgmds we have all simplified it for the harrison tables uh, and flow charts discussion videos please go through that okay now uh, regarding trials many students message me so we should be go through the various trials at least the landmark trials okay so uh, landmark trials like dawn trial diffuse three trial if they ask you a question from uh, a very difficult area that is okay but do not get a question wrong from certain landmark trials like say the you know the icas trial or the uh, the the the, the cadis trial for the dissection so those important landmark trials and also the sampras trial which are all there in harrison so the landmark trials in harrison just go through it just brush through it okay so yes these are the important uh, points uh, i wanted to convey so uh, the the crux is time remaining is limited i know but whatever all of us have shared please go through those topics they are very very high yielding okay so i request all of you to go through those topics and uh, yes so uh, sir uh, any questions we are having the chat box yeah i think uh, dr vivek uh, you muted are you taking those questions or maybe i can ask you the questions that are on nephrology and then you can take over for the rest of the guys Sure, sir. Sure. Uh, Dr. Shinto has joined. Uh, uh, yes, Dr. Shinto, yeah, I think we can have his comments first. Yeah. yeah hi. Yeah, Shinto, sir. Yes. Am, I, am I visible? Uh, you audible, sir? You are audible. audible, not visible. Okay. So what should I do? I think they haven't added me as a panel. One second. I'll just ask them to add. Meanwhile, you know, you can take the question. I'll just. Yeah. Uh, ask them to uh, you know uh, allow Sinto sir's video to be visible. So uh, you know. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, please. Kamal sir, if you could just answer this query of Dr. Vamsi Krishna. Dr. Vamsi asks, is it better to revise notes more or to solve more questions test series? Any ideal percentage division, sir? I think uh, the best strategy is remains the same. What we had for undergrads or even for the neat. What you need to do is attempt three hours and then go back to the notes or either ways do the notes first and attempt three hours of a stretch set of uh, questions. So we have plenty of elite series, plenty of GTs on doc tutorials if you have subscribed to. That's the best way. So you do a thorough. It's like the next test is your exam that's how you appear and try to revise and then you find out where you were lacking those topics you go back and try to cover again on the same part dr vivek somebody has asked about uh, congenital heart i did not deliberately mention it because it's that's the problem with the high yield versus not high yield anyway cardiology nephrology constituted last time the uh, 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 the cardiology and neurology had only 11% and 12% of questions combined together. They were still constituting something like 25% of questions when I and uh, Dr. Rahul sir, we were discussing together, neurology, cardiology still had 25, but the congenital, there were only two questions and compare amount of effort that you need to put for congenital heart. It's so vast. And that's why I deliberately skipped. There'll be a couple of spotters on ECG x-ray, but if you want to prepare congenital, just do Harrison based, uh, ASD, VSD, Tetralogy, and PDA. Those four will do most, and the diagram table flowcharts would suffice. Don't try to master uh, DTGA, CTGA, CCTGA, Alcapa. No point in doing that right now because the syllabus is not sticking to that. So I think there was one more question. I answered one more than uh, what uh, Dr. Vivek asked me, actually. 
sir um, uh, i think uh, shinto sir's video is now visible so shinto sir uh, 20 days remaining for the exam hematology uh, if a student has to quickly brush through at least some important topics what would be your suggestion yeah so hematology as we all know there are considerable overlap with all the subjects okay so ev everything which is asked, say 100 questions are there so most of them so if we revise or quick revision of the questions as such or quick review so there will be considerable considerable overlap in all the subjects so so we all know hematology benign malignant malignant i think medical oncopeople have already touched upon so there are so many uh, mutations there are so many new drugs in aml cml and uh, in the lymphomas also there are so, so many monoclonal scar cell therapies newer therapies are available and uh, so uh, so that's one part so that is oncology so uh, that's being already discussed i will move to benign hematology so benign hematology uh, there are uh, again I, I would say say if you take cardiology thrombosis so there are drugs used for thrombosis anticoagulation there is considerable overlap and uh, same with uh, nephrology is myeloma ckds so it means renal failure and uh, so the hematology, as I, I won't say it is a standout, it is kind of a diluted among all the all the other subjects, I would say. So uh, basic medicine, the extension of a medicine, every subject is an extension. So hematology being the blood flowing through all the organs. So you can get hematology everywhere. Right. So without blood, see, because it's a it's kind of a you can get a hematology in consultative hematology. So questions can be framed like that. So uh, ITP, TTP, HUS. So there are some questions. There, there is a uh, multi-system involved question. So clinical uh, uh, framed questions can be asked. Transplant is another area in hemat. So there might be transplant related infections, GVHT. All those questions can be touched upon. Drugs used in GVHT and uh, the platelets, thrombocytopenias, causes of thrombocytopenia, starting from basic ITPs to all sorts of TMA hit. So these are all fancy diagnoses, fancy questions examiners might ask. And uh, other things, uh, in uh, again, uh, one more thing I would say about uh, malignant, that is hemato-oncology, is new WHO classification. So uh, they might ask, say, the basic say, CML, we all been taught like there are CP, AP, blast crisis. Now that latest, there is no accelerated phases, just CP and back blast crisis. So they can ask those kind of things. So these are all basics which redefine all the diagnostic criteria. So and other uh, myeloproliferative neoplasm, lymphomas, uh, myelomas, uh, and some fancy diagnosis like amylodosis, hemochromatosis. So these are all rare things, but you should be thorough with the common things, common basic anemias, hereditary anemia, hemolytic anemias, autoimmune hemolytic anemias. So uh, pretty much, I think the rest of everything has been discussed by the other faculty. So uh, hematology, we all know um, as such, the seats are less, but uh, subject is very easy. So Probably if you have a thorough knowledge in basic uh, medicine, so hemat would be a problem. That's from my side. Thank you so much, sir, for your insights. Uh, Dr. Vig, any other questions in the chat box? Yeah, there's an important question from Dr. Parul. What would be the strategy for non-medicine people going for the medical group exam? Can NEET PG level be sufficient for qualifying? So... Uh, uh, well... Um, I think for that uh, question, uh, see, for those candidates from, say, a pediatrics background or any other background like a pathology, so I think um, just focus on the most high yield content. Like, for example, the am I audible? Yeah, you're yes. audible, sir. Hello? You are audible, sir. You are audible. Uh, yeah. So basically, what I want to tell you is you've got less time and... Uh, Yes, you said uh, about the need PG content. There are some questions asked at level at that level, but please at least go through the QRP videos and Harrison's tables and flowcharts. Just that. If you did not get time to go through main videos, that's perfectly fine. But please go through the QRP because it's a shorter version. In shorter time, we'll try to cover everything. Okay, because see, I think all faculties will agree with me. I had more difficulty in, uh, you know, preparing for the QRP videos than the main videos because you have got to concise in a short span of time. So that is my suggestion. Yeah. 
Uh, another question, if uh, Niyas sir could answer, uh, there is a question pertaining to <clears throat> what about parasitic and fungal infections and what are the important bacteria apart from Leptospira, Syphilis and Staph? Uh, so parasitic infections, as I already told, malaria comes on the top. Uh, definitely, you can expect uh, questions from malaria. Uh, among the worms, uh, if you have learning only one, strong reload staphylococcus. Okay, strong reload is important from that aspect. Uh, apart from that, uh, more important will be amoebiasis and neurocysticercosis. I believe it uh, parasitology at that point. Uh, among the fungal infections, focus on fungal infections that are common in India. So that includes candidiasis and cryptococcus in the east. Among the moles, aspergillus and mucor. And among the dimorphic fungi, histoplasmosis. So these are the uh, most important uh, topics from the parasitology as well as mycology. All these chapters, virology, mycology, as well as parasitology, has an introductory topics to the uh, introduction to fungal infections, introduction to parasitic infections and viral infections. These three introductory topics as tables as well as high yielding fact that definitely will yield at least some insight. So make sure that you need these introductory chapters or go through these tables in Harrison as well. We have uh, covered this in when we were uh, uh, dealing the tables in Harrison section. So make a point that uh, it is not missed. Okay, okay. So thank you so much. Uh, I think, you know, any more queries we can address in our respective WhatsApp groups. As I said, after the session, we'll be sharing in the comment section of the YouTube video, uh, you know, our contact number so that, you know, you can just come to the, you can WhatsApp us, not call us. Okay, so please WhatsApp us so that uh, we'll add you to the respective uh, WhatsApp groups. And uh, that's it, you know, you can just join one and you can ask for the, you need not message everyone, you can join in anyone and uh, ask for link of the other groups we'll be happy to share so all the best everyone i think we all will show our thumbs up and uh, i'm showing two thumbs up <laughs> okay all, so the, all best. the best all the best all the best for uh, your neat ss exam and uh, yeah that's it but uh, you know though the video is done i think for the remaining days we all will be there with you very active in those whatsapp groups with the questions so stay tuned bye bye thank you so much bye 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 bye, bye. Good night. Thank you so much See you. Bye-bye, all the bears. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.